I did get a bit worried when the deer started running towards me. I don't think I'm man enough. Big a pair of knickers. Can I get the bag out for this minger? It, it wasn't you, it was me. Yeah, if she's not happy, we'll all know about it. Because <laughs> I'll tell you. I'm down here in Glendalock today. It's my first hike in months. <laughs> I just haven't been able to get out. I've been out camping, but I haven't been out for a little day hike in a, in a very long time. So I thought, what better place to come than one of my first ever hikes. I'm going up over the Spink, which goes around the Glendalock Lakes. And uh, I just thought I'd come down here and have a little look. The weather is meant to kick off this evening, so hopefully I'll have been around the block by then. <laughs> this is the largest church in Glendalock. The earliest part of it is around the 11th century. Inside here, there's medieval and early Christian gravestones. Some really beautiful carvings on these. This one was in memory of a son who died at age seven years, and his wife Sarah died at age 48. It's a bit sad, really, isn't it? It's a stunning place, though. So. It's very interesting. If you had the time now, you could really look around. Here's an interesting one. I think that says age 102 years. Does it? It's either 62 or 102, I think it's 102. 1789. Some of them are so old you can't even see the writing on them anymore. I'm going up to this round tower and having an old gawk at. Don't worry, this video is going to be all morbid. <laughs> it's not just going to be shots of a graveyard. The tower is 100 feet high with six stories and the door is 12 feet above the ground. Supposedly they had a ladder that they could remove probably for safety reasons if they needed to use this as a bit of a safe haven. I do find it a bit eerie that there's a door up there and it's open. <laughs> Best not to ask too many questions this hour of the morning. You may have noticed <laughs> you may have noticed my voice. Uh, I'm feeling a bit under the weather today. But um, yeah I thought I'd get out kind of you know a lot of snots on me. <laughs> Yeah, this little church is class. Uh, it's pretty savage, I have to say. I think the roof is made out of stone, which is very unusual. Maybe it's not for the time, but you can see a few more headstones in there. It's a really old deciduous woodland up here with plenty of ancient oak trees. There's a few birch trees just mingled in there. I'm sure there's a few other types that I just can't identify. <laughs> I'll have to study up on my, my tree species. This is the lower lake. I'm just making my way up to the upper lake and then uh, that'll be the start of the hike. I just heard a stag calling. He's not too far away. <laughs> I was just watching a little squirrel up here. And then uh, he started calling. I wouldn't mind seeing him now from a distance. But I wouldn't mind seeing him. You just have to be careful this time of the year because it's rushing season for the, the deer. And they can have heightened aggression, so yeah. Look at this. Huh? Stunning. There's an information board here just detailing all the little hikes you can do. I'm doing the white route, which is about nine kilometers. There's 380 meters of elevation and it should take me about three hours. In case you want to try this hike yourself, I'm gonna pop a bit of information in the description of the video and you can just go and check that out. It might help you out, you know.
there used to be hundreds of steps going up this way but they've adjusted the layout probably to make it more accessible because those steps were cruel I'm not saying this is easy by any stretch of the imagination any bit of incline and I'm overheating overbreeding <laughs> struggling you know This is a really nice viewing platform with a gorgeous view down over the valley. You can see the lower lakes here with the round tower and the chapel behind it. There's a bottle cap there as well, I popped that in my pocket. I put it in there when I take the dry bag off again. I did see a little fleece just left here, but I'm going to leave it because I'm sure it was completely accidental. Maybe it's someone local that will be back up again. If not, hopefully someone else will pick it up. I can't believe I found a tassel up here, I don't know what that's off. I don't know, you find some mad stuff. Can you hear that stag? I'd love to know where he is. <laughs> He's over there somewhere. He's just too far away for me to be able to spot him. It's really nice having the boardwalks, obviously to protect the bog and that. But you want to be careful because you know, the big old chunks taken out of him and the whole lot of just want to watch where you're walking, you know. That might have looked like a pair of knickers, but <laughs> it was someone's handkerchief. So I, I skillfully got into the bag, you know. This is a very popular hike at the weekend. This would be absolutely jammed with people. So if you do plan on coming up here, get out early or try and get out during the week or get out early during the week it's even better I just bumped into a subscriber out running this trail just putting me to shame <laughs> I didn't catch your name but it's nice bumping into you and uh, what a day for us huh it's a beautiful day today it's a bit chilly but it's nice I don't know what I look like with all these bags hanging off me. <laughs> Needs most, I suppose. Picking up later to beat the band here. These steps are the kind of steps where you think you're at the top until you get to the top and then you realize it's not the top. <laughs> I really think this is the top this time though. If it works, I'll keep it. But for now, I'm just too lazy to take off the bag again. I'll be stopping all day. The one thing I'm not picking up is the tissues. You can see a lot of them there beside the trail. There's another bit just down there. There's another bit there. I did pick up the handkerchief back there, but draw the line of tissues. Another one there just for good measure. And like I carry that dry bag so I can keep uh, those bits of litter away from my gear. But people could also carry a dry bag like that to put their own litter in and uh, it'll keep it away from their nice clean interior of their bag, just hang it off the bag strap there and it keeps it dry. And because it's a dry bag, if there's anything wet in it, it's not going to leak, so it's not going to drip down your leg or anything like that. That's only an old cheap one I have, but it does the job, you know. And I said it the last time that I was out, 
that I don't show every time I pick up litter when I'm out on the trail. I only do it to try and encourage people, you know, either to bring their own litter home or maybe if you're out and about and you see something, you wouldn't mind picking it up, like, you know. Every little helps, as I say. I think I can see a little cave over there, actually. You probably can't see it on the camera, just, just there. Little black, it looks like a cave. We'll pretend it's a cave, it's, it's cool if it's a cave, you know. <laughs> oh, here's another orange peel. Oh, lads. Oh, I might get the bag out for this minger. Sorry, this wasn't meant to be a litter picking video, but it's kind of turned into one. <laughs> I just wanted to get out with the camera, you know, try it out, keep in touch with you guys a bit more often. So let's just crack on with the old hike and if I pick up any more bits, unless there's something mad altogether, I'll uh, keep it to myself, you know. <laughs> These are red deer. You can just see them all up on the side. There's a stag lying down here. And a very impressive stag just after laying down. I don't want to ruin the mood. <laughs> Let's just get my arse over here. It's absolutely stunning. There's a few deer here. Having a bit of a standoff here with a dog, but look what I don't really want to startle this deer and I don't want to go too close to him either. Chapter having a standoff with the deer. <laughs> he didn't want to move and uh, frighten her like you know. So she scooted once she kind of saw that I was behind her. I also didn't want to frighten her. There's just deer everywhere. They're absolutely everywhere. There's more just down here. They're dotted along the side up here. He said there's a really big stag down lower as well, so we'll have an old gawk at him. Hopefully he's not on the trail, because uh, if he is, I'll be turning around and going back. <laughs> Just there, they're all running. All the stags are running around like mad, and they're very close to the trail as well. You can just see the trail is here. But there's a stag and a deer just running up there. Stag and a doe. You can see them over there, look.
I'm going to try and get down as quickly as I can because all these stags are running around after each other. One ran right towards me. <laughs> so I, I kind of jumped in off the trail a bit. There's some really beautiful cascades of water down here and the odd pool that you could get in for a dip if you're into that sort of thing. I have toyed with the idea myself but I don't think I'm man enough. I did get a bit worried when the deer started running towards me. <laughs> As you would, you know. Uh, yeah, they're big animals. Beautiful animals but big and horny. <laughs> The last thing you want, you know. It wouldn't take them long to catch up on you, I tell you that. To run across this landscape as if they're on completely flat ground, it's absolutely mad. These buildings are part of an old mine back in the 1860s. There used to be 70 men, women and children working here. That was a mine yard just over here and they had a crusher in that building there. It's a good bit of history up here. I believe Lord of the Rings or Braveheart or something like that was filmed up here as well. But um, yeah, it's a big tourist attraction. This is one of the very first hikes I ever did. It's kind of the reason I'm at it now, you know. It's just a lovely, lovely little hike and there's plenty of routes down here so that it's accessible for a lot of people like you know you don't have to do the big routes you can take a much lower route and have a nice day out in the mountains you know it's getting some strange looks off those chaps there <laughs> eyeballing me though, you know probably wondering why I have so much gear hanging off me I'm not very streamlined at the best of times so it doesn't bother me and you, to be honest you don't even notice the dry bags hanging off the, the bag apart from when you're going up and they're kind of slapping your arse <laughs> give you a little move on you know little <laughs> there's something bothering me and it's that fleece that I left up there. Let me know if you think I should have picked that up because I'm starting to think that maybe I should have. Uh, I don't know how long it's been up there, but it's uh, on my mind, you know. So if you happen to be up this way and it's still up there, bring it down, will you? And let me know about it. <laughs> You know what? I just eyeballed a little spot that'd be ideal for a cup of tea, so I'm gonna make my way down there.
delay that I saw this little spot. It's just down off the trail. I think that's another cave over there. See that there? Maybe I'm just imagining all these caves. I don't know. I'm going to stick with it's a cave. Just because it seems cooler when it's a cave and not just two rocks and a, you know, a shadow. Just in case you're worried, I did bring a whole lot of biscuits with me. I think I might have brought some chocolate. Yeah, I did. Chocolate digestives. I think my powdered milk might be gone a bit funny. The tea doesn't look too healthy, so I'm going to give it a miss. Got myself tidied up there. Didn't leave any trace. I can see the weather starting to change. I can feel it starting to change as well. <laughs> you know, you just get that sixth sense that the, the rain is coming. It's a really magical little trail this is. Just down off the beaten track. I feel like a child again. <laughs> just wandering through the trees, you know. And they're beautiful, beautiful. I think they're Scots pine. Just a beautiful tree, real beautiful color on the bark. Do you hear me voice breaking? I'm like a teenager. Yeah, it's real beautiful colours on the bark and the greens of the, the needles. Uh, it's just lovely. I do always appreciate seeing those type of trees. Hopefully I'm right. Let me know if you think they're Scots pines or not. I really have to brush up on my, my uh, plants and trees. But I have to say, I am feeling a hell of a lot better than I was this morning. And someone said that to me there the other day, that um, I think it's called forest bathing and uh, photo something or other. Basically your body benefits from being out in nature. And uh, you know, it make, obviously it makes you feel better. And it's good for your head to get out, but apparently there's other benefits as well, physically, apart from the obvious exercise you get. I don't know all the ins and outs of it, but I think they have something there, you know. I was feeling well or up, you know. I'm still sick, you know. I'm still not <laughs> fighting fit or anything like that, but I feel a hell of a lot better. Nature is a great healer. And I think if you can appreciate all the little things as well as the big things, you'll enjoy it a lot more. Because it's nice having the wide open views and all the, the sexy photos for Instagram and all that. But when you look on the ground and you see a few air cones or the bark on the tree or, you know, a little cascade, it doesn't have to be a big expansive waterfall. It can be a little trickle of water. It's just stunning, you know. It's part of my problem is, I think everything is stunning. And that makes it extremely difficult to film a video because I'm just filming everything, <laughs> so. <laughs> like, how, like, how can I not look at this? Huh? It's just beautiful, even the way I came, look. I'm just happy I came out. And I'm delighted with this little camera. Hopefully the audio and all that is okay on it. But uh, it's just making things so much quicker. And I'm doing all right for time as well, so the wife will be happy, you know. That's the important thing. <laughs> she's happy, I'm happy. Yeah, if she's not happy, we'll all know about it. Because <laughs> I'll tell you. <laughs>
I had to come back up to the trail because I just have to get a move on, you know. Playtime's over. <laughs> but uh, I just met a chap there who just said good morning to him and I think it's about quarter to one. Did you hear my voice? <laughs> what am I like, huh? Yeah, I think it's about quarter to one. I'm delayed I met that chap earlier. Um, I actually did pretty well there, I have to say. Because normally when I bump into someone who recognizes me from the channel, they catch me off guard. And I'm naturally really socially awkward. Like I'm just so bad at small talk. And uh, when you catch me off guard like that, when I'm in my own little world, you know, I'm, I'm brutal. So every time that happens and they head off on their way, I always think to myself, that's another subscriber lost. <laughs> Just because I'm so awkward, you know. So if you've ever bumped into me while I've been out and about and I've been awkward or, you know, not, not too chatty or whatever, it, it wasn't you, it was me. <laughs> so I do apologise. Uh, I'm working on it. And, uh, yeah, if you ever do see me out and about, don't be afraid to say how are you. And uh, forgive me if I'm a bit awkward at first. <laughs> I'll warm to you, you know, I'll warm to you. But I never got that chap's name, and uh, sorry about that if you're watching. Hopefully you found this video. It was one of the highlights of my day now, I have to say. Nice to see someone enjoying the videos, you know. There's loads of people up here now, which is not unusual. Like I said, it's a fairly popular little spot. There's a few tourist groups going through there with must be 20 or 30 people in them. That's the best part about getting up and getting out early, is that you get pretty much get the whole place yourself. Hopefully you'll stick around and join me for the next one. And I'll see you then. Good luck.